Good morning, good afternoon and good evening to all Denarians on the go and in the know. Like subscribe, and share with your fellow Denarian friends. To help support our channel we now accept tips using the blockchain based Brave Browser and BAT tokens. It makes a huge difference and is very much appreciated. To those of you that made a contribution, I sincerely thank you very much. If you have not done so yet, pick up your free trial copy of the Currency Exchange Planner and check out the awesome new 2020 Currency Exchange Planner Companion, voted the number one exchange planner in the Denar community for a reason. Both the links to the powerful secure blockchain Brave browser as well as the Currency Exchange Planner are in the description box below this video. First article of interest for today, Key Company, we adopt advanced systems to expand services. Key Company confirmed that it provides its services with a smooth flow for millions of beneficiaries, and it did not diagnose any progress during the performance. An official source at the company said that the adoption of advanced systems in communication with developments in the field of electronic payment globally, has achieved a high flow in delivering services to the audience of beneficiaries. He pointed out that the great interaction witnessed in the current stage led us to expand services, especially those that are in harmony with the family's economy, the most important of which are advances that meet the citizen's need. And the possibility of holders of Master Key International obtaining advances ranging between 5 to 25 million dinars, and that the employees of the endogenous interior pay their salaries in the Rafa Dane Bank, they get the same services and advances, and they even develop performance to serve them. Next article of interest. Appearance of Saleh, Iraq's losses due to Corona, range from 50 to 75 million dollars per day. The financial advisor to the Prime Minister revealed the appearance of Mohammed Saleh, on Monday, 9th March 2020, the size of Iraq's economic losses as a result of the coronavirus, ranging from 50 to 75 million dollars per day, while clarifying the salaries of employees, retirees and social welfare. Saleh told Al Masala that the continuation of the decline in oil prices in the global markets due to coronavirus over a fiscal year will create a problem in the governmental financial position, noting that the only solution to overcome this crisis is to support resources and revenues. He added that this crisis requires the state to go towards external borrowing to bridge the federal budget deficit, which will be exacerbated by very large numbers pointing out that the current budget deficit amounted to more than $50 billion due to increased expenditures after calculating the price of a barrel of oil at $56 per barrel. Saleh added that the additions that got the public job by the current government headed by Adel Abdul Mahdi are estimated at about half a million new employees for this year from a group of 4 million employees pointing out that this number is 500,000 new employees is in addition to the payroll clause in the operating budget that it ranges between 11 to 13 trillion dinars. The financial advisor mentioned that the biggest cost in the federal budget for 2020 is the current operating budget that constitutes 77% of its total volume annually, which includes the salaries of employees, retirees, social welfare, and requirements for operating the public job pointing out that changing the size of the operational budget is difficult. Saleh pointed out that the government pays about $4 billion a month in salaries to Iraqi state employees, pointing out that the daily business caretaker government is also not empowered to take many positions to address this current economic crisis, stressing that the size of the deficit will worsen after the oil prices drop to about $41 per barrel, but it is difficult to predict its total size pointing out that the corona crisis has stopped the Chinese economy, which is the locomotive of the global economy, and therefore will affect the levels of the global economy. The financial advisor estimates, Iraq's economic losses due to the coronavirus are between 50 and 75 million dollars per day, stressing that the finance department of the Ministry of Finance is conducting continuous and continuous updates to the general budget law. The government advisor proposes to restructure the federal budget according to the current oil prices to reduce the deficit and address all problems and challenges by reducing many non-binding expenses, 
pointing out that the Ministry of Finance has evidence and plans, a, uh, b, and c, to face all financial crises expected, and therefore that the budget law will be ready in the event that any new government takes over, it will vote on it before it is sent to Parliament for approval. Accordingly, the appearance of Mohamed Saleh, the economic advisor to the Prime Minister, confirmed on Sunday, March 8, 2020, that spending increased 40 trillion dinars compared to last year, while he indicated that external borrowing to bridge the deficit gap is rejected. Saleh said in a statement received to the Obelisk, that the crisis that Iraq is currently going through is severe and not easy, as the price of oil in the draft budget for 2020 put $56 by exporting 3,880,000 barrels and a deficit of approximately 50 trillion dinars, indicating that the decrease oil to less than $45 will increase the deficit even more. Next article of interest. The Great 2020 Oil Plunge Completes Iraq's Perfect Storm 2020 is shaping up to be Iraq's most difficult year since 2003 when the U.S. launched its shock and awe campaign to bring down longtime dictator Saddam Hussein. Lawyer Alec Hadham described a perfect storm of political, economic, and social forces. A week ago, that might have been overwrought, but yesterday's plunge in oil prices makes it a reality. The Iraqi government has suffered three strikes a constitutional crisis, coronavirus, and now a plunge in oil prices. Iraqis are resilient, but they will now pay the price for their leader's populism. First strike, Iraq's constitutional crisis. The first strike against the Iraqi government has been widespread, popular protests. On October 1, 2020, Young Iraqis took to the streets across Iraq in response to growing public unease with corruption and ineffectiveness in the Iraqi government. Iraqis both regularly vote for change and feel powerless. Consider that as Americans complain about Congress, we regularly return over 90% of our representatives to office. In Iraq, on the other hand, Iraqis return only about 25% of incumbents. The revolving door parliament however, has not been enough to bring change because of a flaw in Iraq's election system, one originally imposed by UN bureaucrats and US diplomats concerned more with the short-term ease of organizing an election than the long consequences of its misdesign. Iraqi political parties are organized by lists crafted by often unelected political leaders. In short, this means Iraqi politicians are more accountable to the unaccountable than to any constituencies. When the elections do occur, even when the rallying cry for the electorate is against corruption, the same political bosses horse trade to distribute patronage across parties in a way that essentially disenfranchises the voter. Adil Abdul Mahdi was always a political chameleon. He was communist, then an Islamist, turned into a Democrat, and finally presented himself as a technocrat. In each, he was ineffective. Abdul Mahdi likely did not give the order for militiamen affiliated with pro-Iranian commanders to fire on the crowds on the street, but he did then try to deny culpability and cover up the atrocity. The outrage led to his resignation, but entrenched party interests deadlock over a replacement, months after the 15-day period to find a replacement has passed, and he still acts as a caretaker. The Kurdistan Democratic Party, for example, liked Abdul Mahdi because he funneled billions of extra dollars in oil revenue their way. Kurdish leaders Masrur and Nekhurv and Barzani are unwilling, also, to vote for any new reformist leader who will not unquestionably accept their nominees for ministerial posts. For the Kurdish leaders, patronage trumps Iraqi stability. This is why they imposed Fuad Hussein, former Kurdish President Masoud Barzan as consigliere upon Iraq as finance minister. Hussein had far less interest in reform than in diverting money away from Baghdad and into the pockets of Barzani supporters. While Iraqi President Baran Sali also a Kurd, has genuinely sought to promote reform, he is constitutionally limited, and parliamentarians as the beneficiaries of the old corrupt list system have little incentive to reform themselves out of a job. Also undercutting meaningful reform is Tehran. 
the notion that Abdul Mahdi had truly left the Islamic Supreme Council of Iraq, the Iranian-backed political party in which he once worked, was nonsense. When I visited party headquarters ahead of his government formation, would-be ministers were coming to see party leader Sheikh Humam Hamoudi who was clearly the behind-the-scenes force putting the cabinet together on behalf of Abdul Mahdi. Pro-Tehran politicos are willing to use the ballot box to achieve what they can but if it looks like they may lose, they turn to militias to impose through force of arms what they cannot achieve through the ballot box. Iraqis, however, are not easily intimidated and so even scores of deaths did not stop the protesters who regularly gather in some of Baghdad and other cities' key squares. Second strike, coronavirus, government inefficiency, corruption, ego, Iraq's waste of connections, culture will always likely hamper Iraq's response to the coronavirus. As Mohammed Tafiq Allah we struggled unsuccessfully to put together a government. Some incumbent ministers encouraged their staff to rally publicly to demand the continuation of their tenures. Iraqi health officials might have discouraged large crowds, but the egos of Iraqi ministers did not believe that such recommendations applied to them. The Iraq Oil Report has chronicled coronavirus problems within Iraq's all-important oil industry, disruption of staff rotation in major oil fields and impacts of logistics and distribution of basic goods. But the potential economic problems for Iraq go deeper. Iraqis also face a choice between coronavirus prevention and cuts in revenue from pilgrimage trade which could impact the purses of some of the leading power brokers and decision makers in Tehran, Najaf, and Karbala. Oil may account for the bulk of Iraq's budget, after all, but it remains invisible to most Iraqis. The pilgrimage trade, though, means not only licensing fees, but impacts everyone from major investors in luxury hotels to restaurant owners, souvenir stands, and taxi and bus drivers, and even beggars. Third Strike Oil Saudi Arabia's surprise production increase announcement has sent the price of oil down more than $20 per cent, to around $35 per barrel. Riyadh's action might be more geared to crippling Tehran, but the direct impact on Baghdad's budgets will be huge. More than 40% of Iraqis were born after the 2003 war, and almost two-thirds were born after Operation Desert Storm and the liberation of Kuwait. Put another way, whereas the Iraqi population was around 24 million when President George W. Bush declared the U.S. mission accomplished, by 2030 it will exceed 50 million. Prime Minister Haider Abadi and his economist Chief of Staff Naufal Hassan planned for this eventuality to buffet Iraq against the volatility of the oil market by trimming bureaucracy and investing in the long term. Hassan earned the moniker, Awful Naufal, because he would regularly quash requests for short-term expenditure or bureaucratic expansion simply because neither he nor Abadi saw the long-term sustainability such huge bureaucracy. Abdul Mahdi was the opposite. Essentially, he was a populist, seeking to buy hearts and minds when oil was high by paying off Iraqis with little consideration to sustainability. When Iraqis would make it to his office, they seldom left empty-handed or with a request unfulfilled. That strategy did not help Abdul Mahdi as the Iraqi appetite for more was insatiable. Younger Iraqis without the waste to petition his office resented what they saw as the looting of their country nor did they see the groundwork laid for an economy that could also benefit them. Iraq was like a cancer patient who suddenly suffered a heart attack. The plunge in oil means that it is heading to life support with multiple organ failure. That does not mean that Iraq should be written off. Iraqis are resilient. But the status quo is not tenable. Iraq will change. With ample U.S. support, that change could be for the better. Iraq is a wealthy country that has suffered more than its fair share of tragedy. The young Iraqi generation seeks to break out of the situation in which they have found themselves. Populist prescriptions like a strong presidency may sound good on paper but will not work in practice. After all, it was a strong president which sent Iraq into the descent from which it now seeks to emerge. 
lobby-fueled proposals to dump Baghdad to double down on Kurdistan are no better. Doing nothing would only privilege retrograde forces like Iranian-backed militias or Islamic State-type insurgents. Rather, given Iraq's tremendous political, economic, and social transformation, it is time to re-engage economically and diplomatically to help Iraq reform its political and economic system to better achieve the stability and prosperity the new generation of Iraqis deserve. Hit the like and subscribe button to be alerted as more articles of interest are posted. Check out the Denarian blog, Facebook and Twitter for all of today's articles of interest. Pick up your free trial copy of the newly upgraded Currency Exchange Planner and check out the new 2020 Currency Exchange Planner Companion before you leave. Use the promo code, the Denarian, and get 25% off at checkout when you decide to unleash the full planner's abilities, along with the mobile application added free for being my subscriber. Register today as an affiliate with the Gold Savings Carrot Bar program. If you do not keep your savings in a real asset like gold, you risk everything as the fiat system fails and they boot up the new quantum financial system on the blockchain. Protect your family's wealth today in physical gold, as tomorrow may be too late. The program is made so everyone can afford to save in gold, by offering it one gram at a time. Start saving in a real true asset like gold, it's free to register and secure your family's savings tomorrow. Why do you think all the central banks are loading up on gold lately, and running from the current depreciating fiat US dollar? Do you think they do not know what is coming? Get yourself protected. Both of the links to these invaluable programs are available in the description box below this video, go check them out, knowledge is power, using that newfound knowledge is powerful. Over and out, for now, the Denarian.